Hey guys, I've got a new fresh keyboard from PCB Malaysia. I'm excited to open it up. But first, I know a lot of you are getting into mechanical keyboards, but I know some of you are still confused on how to build one. It's okay, I'm gonna make it easier for you. This is going to be an instructional guide, or you could say Shazlina's guide to building a cool gasket mount mechanical keyboard. Yep. And no soldering required, so you're good. It's okay. But but wait, um, hmm, what's a gasket mount, you ask? Okay, apparently there are many types of keyboard mounting styles. Interesting, right? Who would have thought? According to Thomas Bart, a mechanical keyboard designer says, mounting style is how the plate or PCB is secured in the keyboard housing. And the way the plate and PCB are assembled in the keyboard can actually make a huge difference in sound and typing feel. That's why you can see many different innovative mounting styles out there today. There is a sandwich mount, plateless mount, integrated plate, top mount, tray mount. I mean, I didn't know that these existed before because it never occurred to me when I'm choosing my keyboard. But I know to those enthusiasts out there, hmm, I'm talking to you, would love a gasket mount keyboard because I know it is a really sought after mounting style. Why? because it uses extra padding between the plate and keyboard housing on both sides. This gives the board a cushioned feel since the plate isn't in contact with the other components. But gasket mounts are usually found on higher end keyboards. But hey, what if I'm here to tell you that you don't always have to splurge on a gasket mount. Instead, you could get the PG64 gasket mount keyboard for a much affordable price. It's a local product from PCB Malaysia that provides affordable keyboard kits to people who are starting out on building their own keyboard. So do check them out. It's transparent, it's pretty easy to build, a 65% layout, it's absolutely stunning. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking and let the keyboard do the clacking. <laughs> okay, all right, let's just open it. Oh my god. <gasps> what? No. What? <laughs> it's beautiful. I'm amazed at the color. Oh my gosh. It's so stunning. Really well packaged, guys. Wow. All right, I'm gonna bust open my stats and switches and start greasing them. Now, for newcomers out there, if you're wondering, do I have to lube switches? The answer is no, you don't have to. It's a personal choice. I would recommend it if you want your switches sounding and feeling smoother than before. If you don't wanna spend that extra money and time to lube, you don't have to. You could get switches that are already pre-lubed. For stabs, a thicker lube is much preferred, like Crytox 205 Grade O. 
Now, the crucial part before building any keyboard, test the PCB. Testing ensures all keys can be detected by your tweezers and that the circuit of your PCB works well. FYI, even for hot swap PCBs, you can still test it by using your tweezers and touching the ends of the kale hot swap sockets where the solder is. If your keyboard tester lights up, then it works. Now that we've got all that out of the way, let's add the stabs. A standard 65% keyboard uses only a 6U size stab and 3U 2U stabs, unlike the 60% keyboard where it uses 4 2U stabs instead. For someone who's starting out, you've got to make sure what type of stabs your PCB can support. To know that for sure, if you see any stabs mounting holes are located on the PCB, like right here, that means it supports screw-in stabs. These holes are for the stabs to go through and be screwed on underneath. And if it still feels jiggly, you might want to tighten it some more, making sure it's super stably mounted on to avoid any rattle. Oh, let me just get my other stuff. Uh, all right, so here we've got the plate and pre-cut power and foam to assemble all of them together and start stacking them on top of each other. Pretty simple. Now's the time to grab your favorite switches and start adding them onto the plate and eat them up. Now, I'm talking about the switch plate. I, I'm just kidding. By the way, these grapefruit switches sound delicious to me. And what is it with naming switches with fruit names? Hmm? Okay, just add them to the switch plate. It should make a pop sound once it fits securely inside the PCB. Here's the fun part that adds one extra step to the usual keyboard building, adding on the gasket mounting materials. The stickers provided are super squishy, which will act as a soft, supple cushioning of this keyboard. The small sectioning at the ridges of the plate is where you can stick the gasket sticker foam onto. Though the stickers are not pre-cut properly and I found myself needing to trim the edges on most of them to fit, so you may need scissors for these. By the end of it, the sides should be looking as good and delicious as an Oreo layer. Yummy. Okay, I I'm not done yet, by the way. To insert the finished PCB to the case, we've got to disassemble the case first. So I just need to unscrew all the beautiful golden screws on the back. This should open it up and separate the first two acrylic layers on top. Like this. Put them aside and insert the finished PCB with the switches on top. It should fit right in. I mean, come on, just look at the bounciness of this thing. The flex and good amount of cushion pressure will surely make the sound pop even more. Thus, finishing it off by adding back the previous two layers on top of it. Carefully flip it over and screw it back to the case. Pretty sweet and simple. The last and final best step of all is adding the keycaps. This is where you can make it your own and choose whatever color scheme you would go for. Me, being a cheapskate that I am, not wanting to spend a bunch of time and money waiting on the real GMK Shoko keycaps, I opted for the knockoff version, so please don't come for me, okay? But this is a budget build and I wanted to keep it accessible and easy for anyone to replicate. You can find a lot of keycaps on Shopee or AliExpress for really cheaper prices, especially when you're on a budget. <music> Lastly, let me just do a quick sound test for you ASMR people out there.
So, what do I have to say about the PG64 keyboard? Well, there is a bunch. Firstly, the look of it. Compared to any boring keyboard out there, its semi-transparent case gives off a more unique, stunning touch to it. So if you like the see-through look, this is for you. Though warning, acrylic can scratch easily, so just be careful about that. As for software, perfect. Any keyboard that uses QMK VIA is a plus for me. First, you need to download VIA software in order to run the bin file and view your key map. It's pretty much straightforward from there on. Ugh, the gorgeous, gorgeous RGB. Ugh, don't get me started on that. It has RGB per key and underglow. I mean, acrylic cases with RGB always look stunning and vibrant. This might not be a feature for everyone. The RGB effects you'll get are based on the list of multiple QMK RGB effects. So you'll get plenty. If you can code it, you can customize it. The sound. The sound is incredibly poppy. Like, it might be just me, but it kind of sounds like those cracked knuckles. I mean, I really enjoy typing on this thing. Acrylic cases make a much more deeper, bulky, less pingy sound than an aluminum case. It's definitely cheaper than a fancy, expensive gasket mount keyboard out there. The money you spend is entirely dependent on what kind of key switches and keycaps you're going for. Did I mention this kit does not come with keycaps and switches? Yeah, it's not from a huge brand company, but I could still see how this keyboard will hold up really well, or even better than other budget keyboards out there. As for the cons, there's not a lot but the black Poron gasket sticker on the sides, I would prefer it to have a much more subtle color than black to make it blend more into that translucent look. And just like most custom keyboards, it sadly does not support Bluetooth and does not come with any USB-C cable. Okay, I guess that sums up the PG64. So, now that I've guided you to the steps of building one, maybe you might just want to give the PG64 a try. Hmm? I mean, it's fun, trust me. I would love for anyone to at least build a keyboard once in their entire life. Come on. Alright guys, I guess that's all for me. Thanks for watching. Bye.